So this is the handover for the California coast. We'll begin at the front of the vehicle. As you open the door, you'll need to do this for access to the fuel filler because there's a little tab and that gives you access to the fuel point and it also gives you access to the AdBlue system as well. The bonnet release is up on the inside of the wheel arch. Pull that one back and you can get access under the bonnet. And when you do that, squeeze the tab, so it goes off on the gas strut. Your power steering fluid and oil filler are there. Your screen wash, radiator fluid and brake fluids are all around on that side of the vehicle. And then your dipstick down the front. When you move towards the back of the vehicle, you've got your access for your fresh water tank. So the smaller key in, twist, and use a hose pipe uh, to fill up that tank. There's a drain point on that tank, which we'll show you shortly. Next to that, you've got your mains hookup. It's important that you plug into the side of your van, first of all, and then plug into the power supply that you're going to be using. Your bike rack folds down. Make sure that the anchor points go into position, and then you can pull out the individual bike bars and using, again, the same key, unlock it, and that will enable you then to grip on to each individual bike unit. All right. You've then got straps, and these can be slid backwards and forwards as well and adjusted, and they're released completely then to go around to the individual wheel hubs. Firm press up with the bar down, and that should lock back into position like so. When you open up the tailgate, you're then able to gain access into the back of the van. In preparation for what's in here, I've already taken one panel out, which is the shelf section, which comes out from there. When you first look into that area, you have got a black cap here, and within that sits your 907 camping gas bottle. If you turn the brass nut anti-clockwise, you will turn the gas supply on. If you turn the gas uh, clockwise, you will turn it off. Round on the left hand side at the top of that fitting, you will see a small red lever. And that red lever is the valve for opening and closing the fresh water tank. So at the moment it's in a closed position allowing water to enter the system. If it's turned through 90 degrees, it turns it up. And then on the back wall, you've also got your mains RCD. So those switches are currently in the up position which means the power is turned on. There's a little test switch, which is that little oval on the left-hand side at the top. You can press in on that one to check your main supply to make sure the switches are up to turn on. Chairs come out of a zip bag to completely undo the zip. Give each chair a firm tug and pull down the little lever and you should find that the chair will come out nice and easily and can be unfolded. Vice versa, with the chair back facing the back of the vehicle, push it back in and then just push the little tab back up like so. When you open up the sliding door on the California, you'll see two levers. The one which is nearest to the sliding door is the release mechanism for sliding the couch backwards and forwards. And then you've got the inner one, which is for the drawer. Within that, uh, your magnetic curtains for the side windows, your mains adapter and uh, mains lead and also set of leveling wedges and then more importantly you've also got in here the winding handle for the awning. For the awning to work make sure that the sliding door is shut fully. Put the T up into the slot and then twist the awning accordingly and begin to wind it out. When you reach a midpoint away from the side of the van open the jaw of the pelmet and you will find up inside spring loaded the individual legs so push in on each individual tab let the leg go down through your hand and then to lock it off there's a lever that you push back into position it's the same for the other side to so push in firmly let the leg go down and then lock it off 
These are sunshades. In wet or windy conditions, we always recommend that you put them away. To fully extend the awning, keep winding out and walking the leg out at the same time. And so the awning is fully extended, like so. All right. You'll notice that these arms don't go out dead straight. They always remain in a slight dog leg position. Um, and that just retains the tension within the material. If the awning gets wet before you put it away, um, at the earliest opportunity, get the awning back out and dry it back off. And then to fold it away, again, it's the reverse. So fold in that clip, let the leg slide back up, squeeze it back in so that it sits behind the pelmet. Same with the front leg. And all the way back in. Like so, so that the pelmet should shut back on itself and then wind it back in. For the table, which is used for the in conjunction with the table uh, in conjunction with the chairs from outside, there's a release lever that you pull up with the sliding door shut. And you should be able to lift the table out quite easily, and then each of the legs comes out and locks into position, like so. Push down on those tabs again, and that will enable you then to fold it back through. Make sure you've got the little metal bracket at the top. Load it into position from the base first of all, and then it should firmly press back up, back in, like so. So this is a short video for how to remove the fifth seat on a Volkswagen California. First of all, using a screwdriver or a prising tool, insert in and underneath the plastic trim so that you force the outer cap up and out. With each one of the aluminium rails, slide them forward to a vantage point where you can actually remove them and lift them off. Like so, and the same on the other side, so that they can be prized out. Repeat with the opposite side and then slide the seat forward. So we now have both seat rails uh, caps and sliders removed. Use the D-bar to pull the seat forward so that you line up the U-brackets and then lift the seat upwards and outwards. Two people is preferred. In the centre console above the dashboard you've got your controls for the rear of the vehicle. So there's a on-off switch over on the left hand side and that will immediately show you voltage and amperage within the system along with your fresh water and grey water levels. There's also an indicator here showing that you're currently plugged into the mains supply. For the diesel heating system to work, for the rim heater, you press in on these three wavy lines at the top and you can control the temperature level using the bezel on the right hand side. Uh, there's usually a time gap, anything up to about 30 seconds or so for the diesel heater to engage before you start getting a warm air draft around and vice versa when you switch the system off uh, there's sometimes a delay while it shuts down it just absorbs and uses up any unburnt diesel within the system and the light on there now telling you that the system is engaged and it will start to warm up the vehicle shortly press and hold on that one and that switches that system off for the fridge you turn on the frost symbol on the opposite side and again the higher the number the colder the freezer box will become. If you're wanting to go through other options then you can press in on the bezel and you can go through and actually physically choose different systems or if you want to make adjustments to for example to the clock or the date and time then you can do it from there as well. Press return and it takes you back to that front menu and then to shut the control panel down hold it in for a couple of seconds to press the fridge first and that turns that control panel off. So this is the manual roof on the coast. So pull back on plastic sections and you'll see two pairs of clips on each side. 
So there's a safety clip which needs to be undone first of all, and let that seat belt mechanism drop. And then you have a metal bar which you pull down on, push the clip upwards, pull that metal bar back towards you, and that enables you to release one side. And then it's the same, take the safety off, push in on the button, and then make sure that the clip is clear before you push up on the roof. Use the main crossbar to do that, and the roof should extend up, and then immediately you can, if you wish, follow that with the bed mechanism as well. The retraction of the roof is similar. Make sure you pull the bed mechanism down first of all, then reach up for the grab bar and pull the roof down. As you're bringing the roof down, make sure that the fabric is gathered in. If you're doing it on a windy day, they can billow. Um, Volkswagen do something called a bungee cord, which is designed to go round the hips of these fabrics, and it does make a difference when you're trying to pull the roof down. Now, before the roof is fully extended, uh, sorry, descended, I should say, a couple of things to make sure. First of all, that there's no fabric poking out from around the edge of the seams. And secondly, as you pull the fabric down, make sure that there's no fabric that's going to gather around the hook mechanism for the roof. So as it pulls down towards you, just make sure that you gather any material and push it back on both sides to clear those sections. And then you can begin to start to bring the roof section all the way down. Again, push in on the lever at the base so that the bracket goes up and sits over the top. And then a similar story on the right hand side to detension it. You can snap each one back into position. That should be now down in the secure and then put your safety catches back on like so. Another check by walking around the vehicle to make sure that there is no material poking out of any of the seams. If there is, undo your good work and start again. And then you should be then be able to draw the plastic cover back through. These are a little bit of a fiddle. They do require a little bit of patience. Occasionally the material can get caught in the track as well. So it might take two or three attempts to get them to go backwards and forwards. For the dining table, push in on the tab and slide the whole table right out and then fold it up. On the underside, you'll notice a leg mechanism that you can drop down and within the leg mechanism, there's another slider that you can push down to lock it into position to set the height on the table like so. Push that tab back in and then fold it back up. The table will have to be stowed away for the bed to be operated. Hob and sink. We've got no water in the van at the moment um, because of the cold weather. It will be filled up um, on the day of handover, uh, but normally you would pull up on the tap and your water then will start to be pumped through and discharged from there. And then for the burner hobs, we've got the gas bottles connected up. So a couple of clicks and you should be able to turn on the gas to both burners. There's no isolators on these lids, so make sure that the burners have cooled down or are switched off before you draw the lids down. Alongside your cool box, we've already shown you on the main control panel how you access that. And you've got this little sliding section there for the windows. Down underneath the cabinet unit, over on the left hand side, there's another red lever and that's the lever for draining down your grey water tank. So 
So on the dashboard, you've got some controls that are over on the left-hand side for the Volkswagen um, in, uh, exterior lights. Uh, there's an off, there is an auto mode where the lights will obviously engage when the vehicle is started up, a side light and a dipped headlight mode. If you pull out on the bezel, that will engage your rear fog lights. Alarms will chimes will sound if the alarms are active. On the rest of the steering wheel controls, you have your uh, cruise controls, which are over on this side, and then your speaker and volume controls and adjustments for the head unit uh, for there. At the back, you've got your main beam and indicator controls. And then over on this side, your wiper controls just there. It's a DSG box, so you need to make sure that you start with your foot on the brake clutch pedal and the vehicle in park before you can pull back uh, into reverse neutral drive uh, or sport mode. In drive mode, you are able to use it as a sequential box and you can go up or down through the gears. Central buttons, you've got heated passenger and driver's seat. So by depressing on these ones, uh, they should illuminate, indicating that you've got power coming up through. We'll just start the vehicle up. We'll just start the vehicle up to get those up and running. So you can see from there, and by selecting it, you can reduce the heat output on those. And then the central dials, you've got your temperature on the left-hand dial, the speed of the fan on that side, and then the direction of the fan. So windscreen, windscreen and feet, feet, and then round to the face vents to there. Air conditioning. Heated rear wind, uh, oh, sorry, front heated uh, screen um, and rear screen. By the heat flow, um, it's the heat flow which drives up through the front, which forces airflow up to here, not an actual element within the screen. And then the recirculation one onto there. Radio controls, pressing on this one, and you can go through radio and media options. Uh, no satellite navigation, recommend that you use. Um, uh, Apple or uh, Android uh, car players um, and plug them into your phones or use a separate navigation system onto that. So that concludes the handover for the California coast. I sincerely hope that this van is going to give you lots of miles and lots of smiles. But if you do need to get hold of us, uh, please do. Obviously contact us via email or by phone. But thank you very much. Take care.